sometimes silence can communicate more than words In fact, Ramana Maharishi said that silence is the greatest teaching. Being able to sit in silence all by oneself can be very challenging for most people. because it brings out a lot of stuff which is buried deep within the subconscious. A lot of things, a lot of content is there. But when we are quiet, we are receptive to whatever arises. And that is true meditation. In that there is no filtering, no distortion. In that there is no altering of any content. Meditation is simply the witnessing of whatever arises and whatever arises when seen is released. Nothing needs to be done as such. Yes, Anand. Uh, hi, good evening, Jagjyoti. Just Hi, good evening. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I have written to you through email uh, last month, if you might remember. Uh, I think I had a doubt regarding uh, my profession. So I, I just wanted to get your opinion that uh, like sometimes we get uh, all that peer pressure regarding doing well in life, right? So like everyone else is doing so wonderfully so we should also be doing so that's what i wrote to you about and you even responded so oh okay you know sometimes what happens is that there are too many emails so some of them actually uh some of them actually get lost i don't know maybe they end up in that uh junk folder sometimes i'm not able to respond so i always tell that if if i don't respond within a couple of days please do remind me <laughs> Uh, thank you. But yes, you did respond actually. So okay. I was okay. quite I was quite happy that you took the time. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So tell me. So uh, today uh, I didn't really have any questions. Just I okay. I mean there's just one thing I if I if I might ask that sure. uh, uh, what sort of I mean sitting practice or is there any meditation practice in particular that you uh, would advise that uh, I mean is like a formal uh, sitting practice uh, like setting time aside that's how it is in some other uh, traditions well you see uh, in this uh, in this teaching no practice as such is advised so because the idea is that um, the life, the flow of life itself becomes a meditation once, you know, the concepts are understood. But we do sometimes sit and meditate in some sessions. And uh, the only purpose for that is to quiet the mind a bit so that it is receptive to what is being conveyed. 
other than that there is no goal of meditation as such there is no way there is no prescribed uh, way to sit or to you know or to keep your eyes closed or open it's completely your choice so it is not a formal practice as such other than the concept the concept is simply this that there is one reality which is the source and substance of everything that we can call it oneness we can call it consciousness we can call it brahman whatever name we want we can give to it but that is only a reduction and that alone is that is your isness my isness so once that is understood life itself becomes a meditation other than that this teaching does not prescribe any additional method so you know in your daily interactions in your work in your relationships when you go about you find yourself in a state of observation where you notice your behavior you notice other people's behavior but there is no urgency to change yourself or change the other you're simply observing and at some point that observing personal observing change changes into an impersonal witnessing where there is a switch in perception where there is um let's say there is a birds eye view so in that the insight the spiritual insight comes it comes on its own without us trying to do anything about it so that is the basic philosophy behind this uh, thank you dr deep <laughs> so you don't have to uh, allocate additional time as such but i see but i i would say this that all practices from all traditions are beautiful practices so if you feel like doing anything from other traditions also it is perfectly fine it's not that i'm saying that they are ineffective but your fundamental nature to know it does not require any practice it is simply this it is flowing as this life whatever is arising it is simply this that is the message here thank you okay anyone else would like to ask anything or share anything hello is my voice hello or do you yes mean? yes satyam yeah tell me sir i joined this for the first time Okay. recently started watching your youtube channel okay so sir my doubt is like many times the terms which you are saying are not means i am unable to understand them means i struggle a lot in understanding the language so you are talking about how how old are you i am 21 years old oh you are pretty young <laughs> so you are studying right now Yes, sir. I'm currently a third year MBA student. I see. I see. So, um, Satyam, I would say this that when I was young, and now I was uh, not into spirituality as such, but occasionally I used to listen to you know sometimes I used to listen listen to Osho. sometimes i used to listen to some other people you know my father used to switch on the tv and i would just sit and listen and uh, i could not understand a thing but you see what happens is that the more you listen the more you develop this capacity to listen at some point in your life situations will come where these these teachings Uh, or let's say these messages will come in your consciousness and that is when you will see it acting out in real life now the concept is very simple as such you know the concept simply says there is only consciousness consciousness is our fundamental reality now but i would say one thing before i proceed with this and that is 
it is just a concept. So a concept is neither right nor wrong. A concept is just a concept. Now you take the concept, listen to it and keep it with you. Now when the life presents you with challenges, when life presents you with occasions, now see, then see how these concepts come up and uh, act in your situation, practical situation. That is when you will truly get to know what exactly is being conveyed. So I wouldn't worry about it as such if you're not getting it. Uh, in fact, um, I would suggest um, you to check out the... Um, YouTube, uh, my YouTube playlist on Nisargadatta Maharaj's teachings. They are quite simple, I believe, and I have given a lot of practical examples in that. So you can check those out. I'm sure uh, you will help, and you can always uh, write a mail to me or you know discuss here anything you would you know you would like. If there's any confusion, you can always ask here. Like sir, I was watching your video on understanding ego you recently made mm -hmm. so after means 10 15 minutes i just lost the touch with it means i have watched a lot of speakers like as you mentioned about a show and i watched uh, from last two years a lot of these spiritual gurus on youtube i have consumed a lot of content mm -hmm. so so sir now my now what understanding has developed that it's not I was consuming too much means now what I feel like is what's the use of so much consumption means I'm just consuming, consuming the content and listening it and feeling just good about myself. Yes. In real yes. world, I am not performing as much as I'm consuming. So I just thought to take a break. Don't listen to these things. That is, that is actually a very good thing. It is quite true. Sometimes we get lost in these concepts, you know, and uh, the thing is that, you know, fundamentally there is a feeling underneath that we are trying to avoid when we are watching, you know, endlessly watching content. Now, this could be the dopamine kick. The social mm -hmm. media platforms are quite addictive. So, you know, I don't have a single app installed on my smartphone because I don't want easy access to anything. I, I keep it that way, you know. If I want to watch something, then there has to be an intent that, okay, this is what I want to see. And uh, then I make some effort. I switch on my laptop and then I watch whatever I want to watch. So yes, you are quite right. In fact, uh, in fact, you know, Ramana Maharishi would say that silence is the highest teaching. If you are able to sit all by yourself in solitude. Now, when I say solitude, I don't mean that you isolate yourself from people. What that means is just sit by yourself without any device, without any distraction and see what's going on. That is when you come to know what is actually going on in your mind. Because sometimes... Yes. Yeah, because sometimes what happens is there are too many thoughts and we are trying to escape from that. We are Because those thoughts are creating some sort of a pain. And then what we do is we keep watching videos after video, one after the other. That numbs the pain temporarily. But again, that anxiousness, you know, that anxiety comes back. And this is why some of the great artists like uh, Leonardo da Vinci or uh, I'm forgetting the name of the other one, they would sit with their paintings for hours. They would just stare at their paintings for hours. And that brought out such beautiful things, such, such beautiful creations. So, you know, um, I mean, I'm, it, I'm really glad that at this stage you are so aware because a lot of people are not aware about this, actually. I know some of my friends who start their day 
they immediately cast their uh, my, uh, the youtube on television and the moment they get up they start watching the <laughs> youtube so the ability to sit with yourself sit in silence actually brings great insights and ultimately you will have to listen to nobody if you can do that the insight will come to you and you will be able to relate what the masters have said because you will see how all of these messages are playing out in your life experience yes sir so now sir i have two perspective on these things like you said sitting with myself like i tried sitting with myself i will give my two experiences of my life like usually when i wake up nowadays winter sunday so there are moments like just after waking up i try to just close my eyes and then i don't have any technology or mobile around me so what happens at after closing my eyes lot of my old thoughts like what happened yesterday or some of my future plans they actually start happening in my mind means i get too much entangled and engaged in them whenever i am sitting idle these things arises in my mind and my mind creates starts doing some kind of thinking hypothesizing something and starts thinking in his horns half an hour and one hour is just gone in my mind just playing some stories and all and even when i tried doing some kind of meditation like the normal pranayam that time also sometimes i get stuck means get lost in these stories and this troubles me a lot so i to escape this discomfort i usually then try to numb myself by watching some good content you can say not any entertainment i watch these spiritual content so i feel like at least i can get rid of these thoughts which arises in my mind and yeah. so second question is okay you can answer this one then i will no, no, yeah, yeah. tell me your second okay. question maybe it's related the second one is sir, like you said no, that ultimately we need to listen to ourselves so but sir what are my my own views on this are like when i try to just be independent then what arises is my basic childhood conditioning like if i will stop listening to any good speaker or any stop reading any good person books then what will happen i will start going to my previous childhood conditioning like in my school days i used to watch some bloggers some any random youtubers so i feel still the influence of them on their mindset like what they used to say in their blogs i still have their behaviors in my mindset in my way of talking way of behavior so i just want to means rewire it or change it therefore sometimes i sir feel there is a need to change those old conditioning which are actually not useful or not good for the society and for myself as well those behaviors i just absorbed them when i was a teenager so i feel a need to rewire it and change it therefore i don't feel like becoming independent and taking my own decisions i feel like always i feel a need for an ideal like i want someone to tell me that there should be an idol i should follow him i am always searching for him but i am not getting any idol person around me i see flaws in everyone so i'm just very much confused at whom to follow if there is nothing so much right or wrong as you also said so yeah. these you know there is there is nobody to follow there is nobody honestly there is nobody to follow because every mind has a limited capacity and no mind has solved it now uh, see what happens is that of course it is all the conditioning playing out when you are with your eyes closed and uh, probably now you know distracting yourself watching videos has sort of become a habit as far as i i think in your case so naturally the mind will resist once you try to observe it but again you see in this path we are simply being present to whatever arises now the society's ideals what is right what is wrong this will keep changing throughout your life there will never be a fixed consensus on this every person you listen to will come up 
with their own ideals of what is good for the society, what is bad for the society. And humanity has been doing this since ages. Since ages, we have been handed this blueprint that if you do this, this is good for us. This, If you don't do this, this is not good for us. But the only uh, parameter which I see in personally in my life is my peace of mind. Now, my mind used to be exactly like yours. So, what, what happened that initially, when I used to sit in meditation, these thoughts would come up. And I would try to stop the thoughts. I would feel that there is something wrong with me. That these thoughts, you know, this childhood conditioning and all of these things are emerging. But at some point, it was clear that I am completely powerless against this, against whatever is arising. Now, if you put this focus, you know, if you put this awareness inwards, when I say inwards, you know, you're completely present to what is being presented, how, how a thought is creating a sensation and how that sensation is causing you to take an action. For example, a thought comes, a childhood thought comes, you know, somewhere where maybe you may have been humiliated by a teacher or by a, a school uh, class fellow or something like that. And immediately a sensation arises. Now, what do I do? Usually what happens is that a force arises from within which says, no, numb this. So we immediately pick up our smartphone or we pick up a book or we switch on the television, somehow distract our mind. But you see that that um, that thought is still there. Now again, it has gone down. So what, what will happen next time? Again, it will come up. So every time this resistance that you are bringing up against this content is going to create a tension within you. There will be two forces which will be pulling you apart. One force will say that this is the direction I have to go in based on society's ideals that I should be peaceful, I should be loving, I should be caring, I should be productive, all those society's ideals. So society has given you an image. This is how you should be. Then there is the conditioning which has you know, which has its own effect, where you may be having a lot of negative dialogue about yourself. So these two forces are pulling apart. But these two forces, they're part of the same entity. The one that says is the problem and the other that claims to be the solution is the problem only. So deep, deep down, it is the sense of personal identification or the ego from where this tension arises. Now, the thing is that even after you know this fact, the tension is not going to go away. But once there is total acceptance of the situation the way it is, then the tension does not affect you. And that is the change. As you grow older, you will notice a lot of things, a lot of different relationships you will experience with people, different people. And you will notice that this will be a continuous pattern. But again, when you are aware that there is no personal self, there is no separate self, then that tension in the moment does not create anxiousness which propagates in the horizontal time. So it is felt in the moment and when it is felt in the moment, completely seen in the moment, completely accepted, then it is released from the system. So I would say that if you're sitting in meditation or whatever you know, you're doing, if the thoughts come, let it come that way. Let it happen that way. Don't fight them. Don't fight your feelings. In fact, let them be the way they are. Acknowledge them fully. And it may feel unproductive because mind thinks in that term. Mind thinks that, you know, if I'm able to quiet myself, then it is good performance. If I have too many thoughts, then it is bad performance. You know, I will just share a story with you, a Zen story, where this uh, disciple 
who's been meditating for many years gets quite upset one day so he goes to the master and he says that i have been meditating for so long master it's been 5 6 years but i'm still not able to get rid of the negative thoughts what do i do so the master understands the situation and he says you do one thing you take two balls and you take a group of um, you take a pair of white and black marbles and uh, you uh, you when you start meditating whenever you get a negative thought you put a black marble in one of the balls and whenever you get a positive thought you put a white marble in the other ball and in the end see which one is heavier so the disciples started so in the beginning the ball with the black marbles used to be filled and the other ball was would be empty but slowly slowly the white marbles also started appearing and the black also started reducing at some point it was equal there were white marbles in one bowl and black marbles in the other bowl and that that is when the dis disciple got it so if you see carefully it is not that thoughts are going to stop it is just our labeling we keep reinforcing this fact that this thought is desirable and this is what i want and this thought is undesirable and this is what i don't want and like buddha says aversion and attraction they are both the part of the same force they are both going to create attraction the egoic attraction as in what you are averse to will stick to you what you are attracted to will also stick to you but if you let it be let the process be and simply observe what is happening you will see the tension dissipating it's a slow process it's not going to happen overnight it is a slow process it will take time but the tension dissipates and these childhood conditionings they may appear even when you are older but at some point they will have no effect on you you will see them as a memory as a thought passing by you will see the thought arising the thought playing out in awareness and the thought disappearing and that's it there's nothing more to it actually so it means i have many times heard this thing like attraction and means aversion both are yes a same type of component but yeah. my is a doubt which arises me is like in practical concerns in real life being like dissolving your own whole ego and everything and like there is one more term i heard vairagya so isn't it isn't it, is it practically possible doing your all stuff doing your job and everything and you still can perform in this way because i only see these things in a dichotomy like either you are like either you become too much materialistic or you become a monk then only you can survive i don't see a midway in between like i am just too much confused in these things like you are saying to be just be an observer don't get too no, much no no i am not saying i am not saying you have to be an observer i am not saying you have to sit vigilantly and watch yourself that is ego only watching itself what i am saying is let the watchfulness happen see once you have got the concept the concept is simply this that all there is is consciousness there is no me there is no such thing as mind because mind it springs up when you wake up in deep sleep there is no mind 
the concept is simple so how can i means agree to this point that there is no uh, there is only consciousness because i feel that i don't have an identity if until as i don't do something i don't study i feel like i am worthless my identity no. get lost if no, i no, don't get is. any validation there is a I bit feel of like... yeah there is a bit of confusion here see the thing is i'm not saying to dissolve the identity who is going to dissolve the identity the mind itself the only thing i'm saying is that understand your relationship with your thoughts what comes up and what you are labeling as positive or negative it is only your mind's perception that it is positive it is negative and it is going to change at some point it is going to change so i am only pointing to the illusoriness of that right now the feeling seems very intense and i understand because you are young when i was young you know i also had a lot of ideals and i wanted to be productive i wanted to do a lot of things and i am not saying you have to be a monk this this uh, message never says you have to be a monk in fact ramana maharishi has said that a householder is fully capable of getting this realization simply through work in fact this part this path does not even require you to do any practice there is no practice as such there is simply the understanding that all there is is consciousness the consciousness appears as the mind the consciousness appears as the world the thoughts and that is how our engagement happens in the world the more we try to solve it the more we try to fight our conditioning the more we start getting entangled in the web of mind mind is only trying to find the solution to its own problem so that is what is being indicated here if you see mind for what it is that itself brings us a, a, a level of insight where there is a surrender in that surrender everything is accepted the way it is it does not mean that you become a certain way it does not mean that you have to quit your job or become a monk or that you have to become super materialistic or super spiritualist it's not like that the observation happens there is no observer the observer is an illusion that is what the message says and if you see only when you think about it it appears there are so many moments like when you are watching a youtube youtube channel there is simply the watching happening only when you think that i am watching that is when the separate self comes up springs up so the teaching is only pointing to that what is that separate self what is the nature like sir you said when i am watching some good movies or web series we forget ourselves we are totally into the movie into the web series which we are watching so what does this represent is it connected to what you are saying or is it a different what i am saying like yeah. you are watching a very so, nice not just movie you know even when you are working say you are observed in observed in some work you have an examination right when you are mm-hmm. you know studying or writing something let's say when you are giving an exam right when you are giving an exam what happens you are writing continuously right you so there there your mind right is just co- focused it's just fixated on the problem at hand while writing your exam you are not aware of the fact that i am i satyam i am writing this writing that you know only after you have written your exam you come out of the hall and you say i wrote the exam so what this message says is who is this i 
this i is not our continuous experience but there is a knowing which is our continuous experience and that is what this message points to so you don't have to do anything as such there is no practice as such in this in fact uh, if you see the masters they would simply say that go on and live your life what this message brings an end to is the thinking mind that is concerned with the outcome what will happen to me what will become of me how will i improve in my work how will i do better the mind which remains anxious the mind which wants that things should go according to me the things should be the way i want them to be that is the mind which creates tension and stress because it keeps building stories after stories so the masters say see this mind is it really there don't come to a, an abrupt conclusion that it is there or it is not there just see it and let it be your own experience let this investigation right now you are too young let this investigation happen and the clarity itself will come okay so anybody else would like to ask anything i know satyam you're not satisfied but let the Sorry. let life let I'm life be your confused. yes yes i can understand it's okay don't worry about it see i've told you there is nothing to do as such you are not to sit and so visualize then... then sir no like the main question is this the the concept of which you are not can execute means think about your plans goals futures even when we study also we sit with we need to finish this topic by tomorrow then only we finish it no otherwise we are just randomless we are not focused on thing there is sorry satyam your your voice your, your voice is cracking a bit yeah So let me say like, again, like yeah, yeah, I'm saying, sir, that the the last thing which you said, I feel like it's contradicted to the concept of which you are taught, like planning. Like when I sit to study after an hour, I will plan like in the next week I need to finish these off topics. Then then I will work accordingly. I will plan my time. I will make my schedule and all. But now what you said that don't care about the future, live in the present. Then isn't it contradictory and how will we then achieve something even do a necessary job so so if we don't so plan who, out things right i understand so who wants to achieve something who is that means i want to achieve who is this i where is this means, i means my body mind and everything but body is not there in the deep sleep in dream can you promise me the same thing in the dream can you today can you dream about me and tell me in the dream that i will do this i will do that do you remember this see this no. is the th- this is the thing this i it appears to be solid because it is in this state waking state but the moment you are in your dreams and we spend a significant of our life in dream and in deep sleep in deep sleep the nature of this i changes i mean you are there in dream but you are different you are not this person and you may have very different situations in dream in deep sleep there is absolutely nothing other than the pure awareness the pure consciousness and we spend a significant chunk of our lifetime in deep sleep and in dream also so you see this this is what the inquiry is all about i am not saying that you know don't do whatever you feel is good for you if you feel that uh you know you want to work towards a cause that is fine that is perfectly okay i am not saying don't work but what i am saying is examine the nature of this i because what happens is that when we make plans right a lot of our plans do not come to fruition in life 
And that is where, again, this I comes up, kicks in and says, I failed. And when it says, I failed, it brings about a lot of guilt and shame along with it. And sometimes it so also happens that this I achieves what it wants. But the price of that achievement is pride and arrogance. And that pride again is suffering. Because then we create, you know, we crave the repeat of success. But is the mind eternally satisfied? The question which is important right now is not what is true or false, what is right or wrong. The question is, are you at peace? Yes, sir. That is the question. Are you at peace? Investigate that. And then, of course, you are free to, you know, come to whatever, whatever is your life experience. I mean, I, I say this very frankly in my videos that you don't have to believe a word I say. Go by your own experience, whatever life teaches you. And if you feel that, uh, you know, whatever you're thinking is right, then by all means, go by it. But deep down, do investigate if you are at peace or not. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if anybody else also wants to ask anything. Uh, hi, Jagjo, sir. Hanji. Yes, Anand. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on how do you feel about uh, corporates in general? I mean, uh, I think you mentioned on your blog that you worked in a corporate corporate uh, that setting for a yes. long time. So, so, I mean, my own thoughts are that it can be a little too harsh, too competitive and perhaps even unjust at times. I mean, the people who actually do contribute and like uh, the workers, they're, uh, they're not paid as much as they should be getting paid. So I've often felt that it's not as uh, ideal as it's sometimes, you know, it's presented. So I just <laughs> wondered if you felt the same way or uh, what your thoughts were. Uh, yeah, see, I have worked for more than a decade in the corporate industry. And um, now, of course, at that point, you know, I did not have this understanding, then perhaps I would have done a little better. But from what I see is that, yes, we have created this environment where we are severely lacking this life and work balance. And somehow, you know, this aspect, the work, the need to attain, the need to progress, this has been so exaggerated in our lives. You know, what usually happens is, see, when I was young, when I was out of college, the only thing that was taught to me was to make it big in the corporate sector. You know, I, uh, I had great aspirations to become the CEO, to become this, to become that. And then I really worked very hard in that whole decade to the detriment of my health. I was spending my entire day and almost half night in the office. Because I wanted to, I was highly ambitious. It started, at some point, it started giving me headaches. It was, they were giving me good money also. But at some point, it started giving me headaches. And it started giving me back aches, chronic back pain, which I still struggle with. It's much better now, but it was worse during that time. And... I also felt that there was at that time an inability in me also to create this uh, balance between work and family life. 
because the understanding was not there so i would not put up boundaries you know where i would say no i would not do this extra work now of course now it is one's attitude you see sometimes we want to uh, we want to be perceived as good in the eyes of our seniors and superiors so it is difficult for us to say no to them sometimes it so happens but that comes at a cost but you see from what i learned when i left in 2015 i quit my corporate career and i learned that other aspects of life are very very important and i mean creativity spending time with your loved ones cultivating friendships these are the values which are not taught to us by our parents in our indian especially in our indian societies we are conditioned to be you know to <laughs> to become like a what do you say a fuel for a giant engine now whether it is right or wrong is immaterial like i i don't um, i don't say it is right or wrong it is a personal preference you know some people are uh, of that temperament that they want to uh, uh, work in the corporates and make it big that is all fine but what i'm saying is like abhi i was discussing with satyam that your priorities are going to change with time you are not going to remain the same all the ideas you may have right now about you know attaining this achieving that position it's just our mind which visualizes this fantasy that maybe if i become the ceo or if i get become this become that get so much money then i will be happy so when we are questioning who is this i that thinks it will become happy by doing this by doing that that is where we get confused that is what the inquiry is who is this i and this question leads us to that place of peace this examination leads us to that place of peace so what is important for me at least like my personal this thing is peace of mind so my peace of mind was not there in the corporate world so i decided to leave that and start a new journey and so far it's been beautiful i get to meet wonderful people like you i get to talk to so many people and so many inspiring stories i hear their stories and uh, i get emails from people from all over the world it is beautiful it is much more fulfilling for me yes the money is not there anymore i was paid much more when i was working in the corporate sector now i don't get that much paid but you see the happiness has increased many folds the peace has increased many many fold now don't get the message that i'm saying you quit your job or your corporate career no i understand you you have responsibilities and you may not be in a situation to do that but what i say is that do examine this how this is playing out in your life and how you can balance that is why the mind has been given that is the working mind you know which balances life and work which sees what is essential and what is not essential so when when the when this thinking obsessive mind which is always concerned with the outcome that i want to become this only when i become this i will be happy when that mind is dropped what remains is beauty what remains is creativity simply the creativity you may still be in your corporate job you may still be working but the nature of your relationships with your colleagues with your bosses with your family life at home they will change what you will notice is that now that urgency that need to do extra to achieve this or that has dissolved and what is most important to you is your peace of mind so that is my thought on this subject 
thank you jagjyoti uh, by the way i work in a corporate right now so i guess the take away i what i took away from this was that you can do any job so long as you are content and happy and not pushing yourself too much or i mean you're listening to your heart and i guess of course. it's really fine yeah. yes of course of course i mean i am not going to tell you that leave your job or become a monk <laughs> or start studying vedas or upanishads right. i mean all that wisdom is beautiful but uh, but i mean of course we have to live our lives practical yeah. lives what happens is simply with this questioning of who am i self inquiry this is not a practice this is not a method this you don't have to set aside time to do this you this simply happens it happens as you live your life you know as you meet people so the point here is that you don't have to do any effort you don't have to create special arrangements for this you simply live your life and you simply listen to your heart if you are happy in a job and uh, if you are able to balance your work and family life if you are able to spend some time uh, by yourself in peace then the, you don't need any teaching then you don't need any any other guidance as such that's it thank you thank you jagjyoti well so anybody else would like to ask anything we can take up one last question after that Sir, I had one last thing to ask. Okay, so like, sir, I was. I'm... Let's make it quick because I just want to take yes, up one more. Small, yeah, sure, small sure, thing. sure, sure. Sir, I would like just uh, you know, I would like sir, to like take one sir... more question after this, and then we'll call it off for today. Yeah, tell me. So, like, I was, I was, I tried reading lot of self help book. Means, what do you sir suggest reading those? now it is best sellers coming up every day like how to talk to anyone means so many kind of self help books are there so i just pick up someone i read few pages and leave it in between and even tried i tried also reading bhagavad gita by different authors but i am not able to complete any one of them and not able to means getting satisfied with any textbook so sir can you give me any list from which i can start and read one by one because there are too many books and options available i'm just confused where to start and is this is it a right choice for me it won't let misguide see, me these thoughts come in my see now that is uh, see uh, i i feel i will just briefly touch upon this subject you can read any self help book you like right it's not that the books misguide you it's just that uh as you age there are certain things which will reveal to you right so you may not be able to comprehend things as such at this stage in your life you know if if somebody had told me to read bhagavad gita when i was 18 years old or 19 years old i probably wouldn't have been able to understand the implications of what were said in that i mean we used to listen to this uh, shlok from uh, bhagavad gita कर्मण्यवाधिकारस्ते मा फलेशु कदाचन मा कर्म फल हेतुर्भव मातसंगो सविकर्मणि वी हैड नो क्लू व्हाट इट मींस द रीजन आई हैव नॉट स्टडीड भगवत गीता टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट विद यू दिस इज द श्लोक आई रिमेंबर बिकॉज़ आई यूज्ड टू सी इट इन द मूवीज इन द इन द वेरी बिगिनिंग दे यूज्ड टू यू नो रिसाइट दिस बट एट दैट टाइम आई कुड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इट सो व्हाट टॉट मी Yeah, my own life experience taught me and life is the best teacher life is going to teach you and your own experience will teach you so i would say get hold of any book which you like it depends on you know what you want to in which direction you want to go and um, if you really want to get some theory on uh, mind you know about the nature of mind you can read a book on vipassana vipassana meditation and uh, then there are other you know different other books uh, ramana maharishi's books you can read in fact uh, there is a book uh, called uh, 
there is a book by the author called author arthur osborn it's uh, called the teachings of shri ramana maharishi it is a very practical book ramana maharishi tells you how to realize the self the eternal consciousness being a householder and being active in your work life he says that the path of karma does not distract you from your goals he says that a family life does not distract you from your goals and at the same point at the same time he gives a lot of beautiful pointers in that book so you can read that i would urge, urge you to read that book that is an interesting book but i i will again stress this fact that it will happen slowly as you experience life as you see things playing out in your own life so rely on that not on books <laughs> okay so we can take up one last question if anybody would like to ask anything uh hi jagjot hi shweta padma how are you hello i am good i am good i joined a bit late today no it's problem late. no problem yeah. tell me yeah. so my question here is like like there are so many information these days online like regarding these things like regarding the spirituality and things related to your self awareness like what to take and what not to take like how do we <laughs> judge judge that there are so so many you know shwet uh, padma i was uh, i think speaking to satyam about this uh, abhi uh, he was also saying uh, the same thing that yeah you... like in the corporate <laughs> like i am also a corporate employee yeah yeah which true, we were true. discussing yes true true so in the corporate world um, am i audible yeah yeah i can hear you yes i can hear you hello yeah now you're mute i think yeah 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 Yeah, Sorry, no. I got disconnected. No problem. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. yeah so, so, you... so I also I am also in corporate. Mm hmm. And you know when you think that you are in the you are in like you are in peace like whatever you are doing you are not running behind the uh, various like like to move ahead like you feel that currently where I am I am fine yeah. with it. but then when you move to move into the office and when you are along with the people with people like rushing in the race running the race together that's when again you ha start having that doubt that like even i have to do this like th th that conflict is like in every areas of life like you are you are, you feel that you are fine where you are right now Yeah. Then when you come out in the society, <laughs> and how everyone is following the same patterns, that times it it's like you are. Then you feel that suddenly you are lagging behind. Yes, yes. You know, it so happens. You know that it is very difficult for us to look at things, look at things outside of the perspective that has been fed to us. it that chain does not break easily because this entity me or or what i was referring to i earlier is a conditioned entity and it sees things in absolutely black and white scenarios you know either this or that so i'll give you one example i have a friend who is very wealthy very rich now a couple of years back he his business was not doing so well so he was in debts and uh, he approached me and he asked me for advice so i told him that uh, if this debt is too much and it is giving you restless nights and you are you know not able to uh enjoy with your family and you're all the time anxious why don't you uh now this guy he had a 
he has a very that time he had a very big mansion which was uh which was quite costly i mean it was so uh the cost was so high that his debt could be paid by selling that property so i told him have you considered this possibility that if you somehow managed to sell this house this property and move to a slightly humble dwelling and uh pay off your loan and whatever money is left put it in your business so he said impossible he said this is not possible then i said okay fine if this is not possible then you know keep trying for other options see what what comes along so what happened after about 6 to 7 months i got a call from him and he told me that he had sold the house and it worked wonderfully for him and finally he could be peaceful now see at that point when i told him that possibility was not there for him you know yeah. because a lot of conditioning was there my property my name what will people think of me my image you know all those things were playing out in his mind so his mind was fixed fixated in that fantasy that no this is not an option this is my ancestral house i am not going to sell it i said okay fine if that is not an option then consider other options but at certain stage he may have thought that maybe this is a possibility so what happens is when you examine the nature of this i this me that thinks that oh i am trapped that i have to get ahead that is again a bubble which this me has built around itself and this is what is called the thinking mind the obsessive thinking mind which sees things like oh i must do this i must do that otherwise things won't be good when this mind drops so many other possibilities arise which may not arise at this point in time now this message simply says that whatever is destined to happen will happen so it may happen that despite your best efforts in you know trying to balance your family life and work life and trying to do well in the corporate things may not pan out the way we imagine it may also happen that without you trying to do anything you may get certain things so again you know it is all about accepting things the way they are that is what meditation is so what i say do your best in a given situation wherever you feel if you think yeah. that you know in your job do your best give it your best shot this this message is not about passivity it is not about resignation that is also an egoic thought that since it is god's will i will not do anything <laughs> you know how do you know you're not supposed to do anything mm -hmm. so do your best but despite your best efforts things may not pan out the way you want them to with this acceptance when you move that is when you experience true peace but till there is an outcome there is an attachment to an outcome that no it has to be this way my happiness depends only if it works out this way yeah. or that way you know i am speaking from personal experience <laughs> that, that is, leads to frustration yeah that leads to frustration that leads to resentment and that reflects in our family with our family with our partners with our children with our parents with our friends it reflects in all aspects of our life so you know as they say do your best and leave the rest there is nothing else the human object can do and what is destined will happen but the ego says no you know that is how it, it is fussy no 
I have to become better. You know, everybody is thinking like that. Even your, even the people who are working with you, they are also thinking the same. Everybody wants to become better. Every ch child in class wants to come first. That is their fantasy. But just imagine a scenario: if everybody is first, then there is nobody who is first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at some point, you know, you re recognize that there is something not quite here which which doesn't quite add up you know the 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 promise that has been handed over to us it is not exactly the same there is something lacking and that is the investigation i mean what is what is it that is lacking here for me this was clear that every happiness through any means through relationship through work through success through anything any happiness that is attained comes with unhappiness this duality cannot be broken mm. where there is pain there is pleasure and nisargadatta maharaj said that pain is the constant background of every pleasure yeah so i mean i would say from your end do the best you can but at the same time you know see the see the totality of it if it you know if it disrupts your peace if you're too much worried or anxious about things then you need to take a look at what's happening mm. that is it thank you welcome okay i guess we can conclude this session for now we will meet again next time thank you all for joining